Wow. What's up everyone, Big Jano here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's having a great day. It's been a minute since we've seen each other, so welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about the new 3D printer in the room. I'm talking about the one back there, the FL Sun Super Racer. That's sitting right next to my Mega X. You guys have probably seen it in a few other videos I've made in the past few weeks. You've seen it on a few shorts, and you guys are probably wondering uh, how this printer is, and we're gonna talk about that today. I bought this printer a few months ago to expand my 3D printing capabilities, and today we're gonna to talk about uh, my experiences with the machine, the first thoughts I've had with this machine, the few months I've had it, and just give you an idea of what this printer is and what this printer is really capable of. Before I begin, I wanna make note of one awesome new community that I've been very, very grateful to be a part of in the last few months, and that, my friends, is MakerDeck. For those that don't know, MakerDeck is a brand new community spearheaded by my good friend, Chris Perillo. It's an awesome new community where up to 10 different makers from all over the world can show off what they're 3D printing, painting, making, woodworking, whatever you wanna do. It's all here on one stream and up to 10 people at any point in time can be on the live stream uh, working on their 3D prints or their crafts or their hobbies. And you actually have the opportunity to do the same exact thing. I've been on MakerDeck a few times myself already, showing off a few 3D prints. It's been really cool just to see what other people are making, as well as showcase my prints to other people. If this is of interest to you and want to learn more about MakerDeck, or even get involved yourself and show off your 3D prints to everybody, there will be a link in the description to join MakerDeck. Twitch.tv slash MakerDeck is where the live stream happens. And there, there'll be a ton of community members to help you out uh, with how to actually get yourself in the stream. There's also a Discord. You should join their Discord as well. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Uh, but if you want more information about that, or if that's of interest to you, links will be below in the description. Okay, so right up front, I want everyone to know that this was not sent to me by FL Sun. I bought this machine with my own money, and all thoughts and opinions expressed in this video today are my own. And, you know, not everybody's going to have the same experience with every 3D printer, so... Uh, just keep that in mind and definitely look around if you're looking to get a 3D printer. But nonetheless, we're going to talk about the FL Sun Super Racer today and kind of my experience with the new printer as we've been uh, printing with it the last few months. You've probably noticed that this printer is a little bit different than my Mega X. The Mega X is a Cartesian style 3D printer in which there's only single directions of movement at any given time between the hot end and the bed. However, the FL Sun Super Racer back here is a Delta style 3D printer in which there are three arms that are all connected to the hot end and they all move simultaneously to 3D print whatever it is in all three directions at once, making it a lot faster and the bed stays completely stationary at the same time. The bed is a mesh coated glass bed similar to my Mega X and has a circular diameter of 260 millimeters. The printer also has 330 millimeters in the Z or Z height to also print with. So it's a little bit taller than my Mega X. To give a brief rundown of how this machine operates, there are three sets of spring tension carbon fiber arms that attach to three separate posts embedded with linear rails, and those attach to the effector, or the hot end assembly, uh, by the way of ball joints. These carbon fiber arms and the effector assembly are super lightweight, which give it that opportunity to move in all sorts of different directions at once and be able to print a lot faster than your standard Cartesian style printer. Assembly of this machine is super easy and straightforward, I actually did this on a live stream a few months ago, which if you guys aren't following my live stream channel, twitch.tv slash bigjano is where I live stream a few days a week, uh, 3D printing, making cool projects, and just hanging out with the community. It's a great time, so if you guys aren't following me there, please go do so. It'd be greatly appreciated. Setup basically includes the three posts, as well as the top end of the printer, as well as the base of the printer, which has the bed already assembled. The linear rails and belts are already assembled on each of the three posts, so all you really have to do is take each of the three posts, screw them into the tops and the bottom of the printer, attach the effector assembly to the three sets of rods, attach those three sets of carbon fiber arms to the rails, and you're pretty much ready to start printing. I'm not going to go too far in depth in the assembly process here, only because it's been covered so much already. This printer's been out for a little while. And there's already a lot of videos on YouTube that cover this in more detail. So I recommend you guys check out Brian Vines or the ModBot YouTube channels uh, for their experiences on this machine and to give you guys a little bit better background on the assembly process. They're also awesome people in the 3D printing community. And if you guys haven't subscribed to their channels yet on YouTube, go do so. Some of the features of this machine include a volcano style hot end and nozzle, a Bontech clone extruder, which I found to be really, really nice. Uh, there's also a nice spool holder at the top, which is easily uh, attached with a couple screws. 
There's also a really nice touch screen with a stretch cord so you can actually move it around and it has a little magnet on the back so you can stick it on a little magnet base and it's right there, it just sits on one of the posts and it's uh, actually a really cool feature. I like the, the usability of it. The Super Racer comes with a storage compartment on the base of the printer as well and FL Sun is super generous in giving you some spare parts with the printer including the leveling sensor, which we'll get to in detail in a moment, a spare tube of lubricant, some extra screws, a micro SD card and a micro SD card reader, some spare parts for the hot end, including an extra nozzle, heat block and heat brake, some Allen wrenches and an additional assembly hardware, a spare heater cartridge and thermistor, a brush, and you also get some zip ties and some Bowden tube clips as well. One of the things I love about the Super Racer is the bed leveling process. The FL Sun Super Racer comes with a bed leveling probe that attaches to a magnetic spacer around the hot end assembly. You just connect the probe to the wire named Level in the wire harness. And then from there, you go to the touch screen and click Tools, and then go to Auto Level and select the auto leveling process. From there, the probe is going to automatically touch the various points along the bed. And this process should just take about two to three minutes. Once the printer is done auto probing, you can now disconnect the probe from the printer. We got one more thing left to do with leveling and that's just adjusting our Z offset. There's another tool on the screen called to move the Z zero. After we're done probing our bed, we want to then heat the bed up to 60 degrees C and then we're going to hit this move Z zero button and that's going to take the hot end down all the way to its zero position. From there, you can adjust the Z offset by baby stepping until you get it just right where if you take a piece of paper underneath the nozzle and you start scraping it underneath, you should have just a little bit of resistance and that should tell you your bed is leveled perfectly. Another awesome feature of this machine is the touchscreen itself. FL Sun did a really great job with this touchscreen. It's very easy to use. It's very ergonomical. I love the stretchy cord with the magnet base. I think it's a really neat touch. If you're on the more advanced side of things, you might find it a little bit basic, but I think for most people using this machine, I think they're gonna get the most out of this. It's very easy to use and a lot of the functions are very straightforward and they're not named weird names. <laughs> for those interested in the electronics of the machine, the FL Sun Super Racer does come with a 32-bit mainboard and TMC2209 stepper drivers. This makes the machine very quiet. You can barely hear it when it's operating. The only thing you really hear from this machine when it's on is the fan from the power supply as well as the cooling fans from the hot end assembly. Now that I've told you a little bit about the machine specs, let's now get into what you guys want to see. How does it print? This machine uses Cura as its default slicer, which is really great because in the latest rendition of Cura, it does actually include some profiles for the FL Sun Super Racer. To start, we printed the already sliced file that came with the SD card with the printer. It was just a standard nut and bolt, but printed very, very well. It only took like an hour, I believe. And we printed this in some Brad's Orange Glitter PLA from Printed Solid and it looks great. The detail of the knurled nut looks fantastic. From there, we went and sliced a few of our own other files. We did use the draft stock profile from Cura for most of our testing, and we didn't do any adjustments to the profile except adjust some of our temperatures a little bit higher for our preference for PLA. Next thing we print is gotta be a Benchy. This has to be one of the cleanest Benchies that I've ever printed to date. Uh, this was printed in some eSun Dark Green PLA Plus, and you guys can just see, uh, this is pretty clean. I did not get any deformities on this whatsoever, and we printed this with infill speeds of 100 millimeters per second, which is way faster than anything my Mega X can print at the moment. So, um, yeah, you really can't beat that for what this thing can do. And the best part about this is that this isn't even the fastest that this printer can go. In theory, this printer can print up to speeds of 150, even 200 millimeters per second in some scenarios. They recommend no more than 150 millimeters per second, but keep in mind that with speed comes less quality. So if you want better quality, you're probably gonna have to drop your speed down a little bit. So if you find a good medium in between 150 and even 100 in this scenario, you're gonna get fairly good prints almost every single time with this printer. 
To test out the faster speeds, we did print out another Benchy here at 150 millimeters per second. And you can see it's not as clean as the other Benchy. There's some cooling issues and the overhang here on the roof doesn't look as clean. But honestly, this is still a pretty acceptable Benchy. And for the time this took, this is pretty good for 25, 30 minutes. Meanwhile, this printed at 30 to 35 minutes. Seriously, in 30 minutes, you can get a clean Benchy that looks as good as this. To test the tolerances on this machine, we decided to print the four to one compound gear assembly from JBV Creative. And we printed this in some high five metallic blue PLA from Protopasta. All in all, this print looks super clean. The colors are amazing. And this print is just super fun to play with. <laughs> I could play with this all day. So one of two projects that I actually had while testing out this machine was to print some stuff for my sister's wedding shower. A few weeks ago, she contacted me and asked me to print her some nice things for her wedding shower, some decorations and some table pieces for the, the venue. And I said, of course. So I went ahead and designed this really cool heart shaped table piece. And I also made these little wedding ring style table decorations to kind of scatter across the tables. Both of these were printed in PETG. The pink was printed in pink grapefruit, green gate PETG, and the dark green was printed in hatchbox dark green PETG. These colors were chosen specifically as these are her wedding colors. And all in all, these came out really well. I think with PETG, I had a little bit of stringiness on some of my prints. And I think if I would have adjusted my retraction just a tiny bit, as well as maybe bump my speeds down a little bit. I don't think PETG likes to be printed super fast. So if I bump my speeds down and adjust the retraction, I think I'd have a really good profile. I also didn't dry my PETG ahead of time. So that probably also didn't help my cause. <laughs> the other project you might ask has to do with that thing on the wall behind me. If you follow me on Twitter, you've probably already seen my wall mounted large scale 3D printer nozzle in more detail with leftover LEDs from my general lease projects simulating filament coming out of the nozzle. I said a while back that I wanted to make some interchangeable front covers so I could swap out different colored nozzles if I wanted to show different colors off on the wall. And that's exactly what I did here. I printed another front half of my nozzle and this was printed in some sole black glitter PLA from Printed Solid. This took only 22 hours on the printer and that was including support material. And you could see this print came out amazing, like almost zero flaws whatsoever. My face is a nozzle now. The support material is also super easy to remove, almost too easy. I actually have another one printing right now as we speak. <laughs> this will be done in like another 10 hours. And because I love my large scale design so much, I ended up making a mini version of my nozzle. And here I turned these into fridge magnets. And I ended up cutting two holes out and putting some eight millimeter magnets in. And I'm gonna be giving these out at Murph in a few weeks, the Midwest Rep Rap Festival. So if you guys are gonna be there, come say hi and get yourself a fridge magnet. We've been printing these nonstop for Murph and the FL Sun Super Racer just keeps chugging along with no issues. And these are printed in 0.2 layer height and no stringing, no issues. These look great. I can't wait to hand these out at Murph. All right, before I give my final thoughts on this machine, let's cover a few of the negatives that I've seen and uncovered with this printer since getting it a few months ago. So I talked about getting really good first layers on the majority of my prints. However, there were a few prints that I had really difficult times getting anything to stick to the print bed. This seemed to happen after a really large print or after every few smaller prints that I would have this adhesion issue. And I don't know if it's a different type of coating used on their glass bed versus the Mega X. They both look very similar, but in the two years I've had the Mega X, I've had zero adhesion issues with the machine. So I'm wondering if it's a slightly different material that they used uh, for the bed coating. Thankfully, I'm able to mitigate this by wiping the bed down with some isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber towel. Once I do that, I'm usually good to go again and I don't see any adhesion issues for a few prints. One of the other slightly quirky things about this machine is that if you want to upgrade the firmware, you have to upgrade the firmware on the screen as well as the machine itself. After doing a little bit of digging around and finding some more information on YouTube and through the Facebook user groups, I did find how to upgrade the firmware on the machine. You start like any normal 3D printer firmware upgrade, you have to take your machine and directly connect it to your PC via a USB cable and directly flash the firmware to the motherboard. From there, you also have to take apart the screen and the screen cover, 
and use a micro SD card to flash the firmware onto the screen separately once you do that to the main board. The process itself of actually flashing new firmware to the machine isn't too difficult. However, there's not a lot of detail or clarity on steps you need to do before or after this flashing. And normally I just went ahead and started another print after I reflashed new firmware, not thinking I had to relevel the bed again. However, when I went to start a new print, my Z0 level was completely erased and the nozzle went right into the bed and started scraping and scratching the bed up pretty badly. Not ideal. Yes, I blame myself mostly for this error. I probably should have releveled the bed after flashing new firmware. I didn't even think twice of it, but there's no written instruction anywhere saying you have to do so. So for newer users sake, I do hope they put down the instructions to relevel your bed before starting a new print so they don't make the same mistakes I did. One last thing I'll comment on, and this is more of a suggestion rather than a critique, but I really do hope the spool holder is just a few inches longer. I had a few issues with some of my spools being just slightly too wide for the spool holder and it just kind of irritated me a little bit. Don't get me wrong, the spool holder is great. It works exactly how it's supposed to and I had no problems with it. I just wish it was a tad bit wider to fit some of my larger spools. Despite these small little quirks, this machine is seriously still an impressive 3D printer. I've been using this machine the last few months almost non-stop and the quality of the prints I'm getting out of this machine have been almost perfect every single time. This thing continues to be a workhorse in my 3D print farm, which isn't a farm, it's just two printers, but it's been getting the job done no matter what I throw at it, and I cannot wait to use this more down the road for future projects. Just keep in mind the trade-offs between high speed versus high quality, but if you get a good sweet spot between the two, you're gonna get fantastic prints with this machine that you'll be more than happy with. And with very little additional tweaking out of box, I guarantee you'll be more than happy with this machine if you get one yourself. And with that being said, that's gonna do it for this video here on the FL Sun Super Racer. Thank you so much everybody for watching this video and I greatly appreciate you guys sticking around to the end. If you have any additional questions on this machine or wanted me to cover more topics about this machine in detail, please leave me a comment in the video below. I'd like to hear your suggestions. Don't forget if you enjoyed this video or enjoy any of the other content, please consider subscribing to my channel. It'd be greatly appreciated as we continue to grow this community and we're getting closer every day to 1000 subscribers. So thank you, thank you all for all your support up till now. Also, if you wanna follow me on other social media platforms, I'm also on Twitter, at Big Jano is where you can find me there. And I'm also on Twitch a few nights a week live streaming, twitch.tv slash Big Jano. We usually work on 3D printing, working on projects, and just hanging out with the 3D printing community. So if you guys want to see me live, come hang out with me on Twitch. We also do have a Discord as well, a Big Jano Discord. All these links will be in the description below. Thank you everybody for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. I'll catch you all in the next video. And until next time. Thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. I'll catch you all in the next video. And until next time, keep doing it big.